Don't tell your mother Kiss one another Die for each other We're cool for the summer Um In this video I kind of want to talk a little bit about Well just How corporations And Essentially how the US government Itself typically tend to bully others and tend to try to pull all sorts of bull crap and thinking that they are immune to judicial oversight, that they are immune from different things like that. Now, I'm not going to get too wrapped up in this because I have other issues that I'm, I'm going to talk about um, in other videos. Um, but one thing I do want to basically just do real quick is the talking about these different things now recently there was a um, there was a toxic sludge leak into the Spokane River in Washington State um, apparent um, according to Reuters seed and agricultural chemical giant Monsanto um, is being sued over their over the belief that they should pay for the cleanup of the Washington State River that was polluted with a dangerous chemical contaminant that the company that the company manufactured decades ago, um, the city of Spokane has officially filed a lawsuit um, against Monsanto for the um, the toxic leak of polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBs. This was once used in products ranging from fluorescent lights and appliances to insulation and insecticides and these were banned in the late 1970s as carcinogens and general health hazards, hazards well, arose because of it though they linger in the environment now Monsanto was the lone manufacturer of PCBs in the US from 1935 to 1979 and the company concealed the toxicity from the municipality from city attorney uh, um, according to city attorneys um, who filed the complaint uh, last week in the U.S. District Court? According to one of the uh, one of the city attorneys, despite Monsanto's knowledge, Monsanto failed to provide adequate warnings that its PCBs would become a global contaminant and contaminate waterways and wildlife such as Spokane stormwater and fish in the Spokane River. Uh, it is not known what the specific uh, compens you know compensation in damages that are being asked for um, but it is estimate that the treatment amounts of for the river could cost up uh, upwards of a hundred million dollars or more uh, Monsanto spokesman Charlotte Lord said the company is not responsible for the cleanup and other lawsuit related costs uh, Monsanto today and for the last decade has been focused solely on agriculture but we share a name of that with a company that dates back to 1901. The manufacture of PCBs in the United States was banned in 1979, although the former Monsanto voluntarily ceased production and selling before that. So I love how they play on this whole thing of technicalities. It's like, oh, we are not the same company that we were back then. Yeah, just like the South is not the same fucking hotbed of racism and injustice that it was in 1865 right I mean it's the same company that makes the same fucking that makes different chemicals and stuff like that but just because you have just because you claim that you are that you have moved away from what you originally were doesn't really take away anything you basically hold the name and the rights of the old whether it whether of an old Monsanto or not, or whether you were the same company or whether that doesn't really matter. You are you are liable for what you have done. You, you know it doesn't matter whether you've taken on that name and thus you are justly kind of connected to it. And not only that, I'm pretty sure that there was probably people that founded a new Monsanto that were well members of the old one so it doesn't really matter the fact that Lord is trying to say that PCBs were sold at the time were uh, at the time 
uh, were a lawful and useful product that was then incorporated by third parties into other useful products, such as fire protection and electrical equipment. And they're basically trying to say that if improper disposal or other improper uses created the necessary necessity for cleanup costs, then these other third parties would bear responsibility for the cost. It's that typical corporate bullshit. Try, you know, trying to avoid liability, trying to push it off onto third parties that, you know, trying to push it on off onto third parties that were connected to that were connected to you, but don't take, you know, push it off onto other people. Don't accept complete responsibility for yourself. All in the interest of not having to, you know, not having to pay, you know, compensation, pay for damages, pay for the health care costs of the people that you've poisoned. And in general, basically accept no responsibility, accept no punishment for yourself. And the stupid thing is, is that Monsanto is actually going to try to throw more, you know, all the money towards, that it should be paying towards compensation into fighting this lawsuit and basically, you know, buying off the judicial system. That is seriously what they're probably going to do. I really think that that is exactly what's going to happen. That Monsanto is, instead of accepting responsibility, is going to pay off its, co the you know, pay its way, it's it basically spend more money than what the lawsuit is actually asking for in order to basically get out of having to pay anything. And the way they're going to do that is by paying their numerous number of lawyers to do the dirty work for them. In fact, I highly doubt that Charlotte Lord or any CEO or corporate executive in Monsanto is going to actually even see a day in court. They're probably not even going to step anywhere near a courthouse because they're going to have all their lawyers and their assistants and lobbyists and all kinds of other people talk for them. So, in other words, they're not even going, they don't even have the sack to even step forward and show their face in a courtroom or to try to even defend themselves from these attacks, they're just going to simply buy their way out of it. And I think that's petty, I think that's childish, I think that's cowardly, and I think it's complete bullshit. But then again, that's the nature of a corporation. And that's unfortunately the nature of the U.S. judicial system. And frankly, I really don't care who sees this because... I have the right to free speech. Suck it. Secondly, the one thing that I wanted to talk about was the issue with a group that's called um, called Some of Us. It's a activist group that essentially has been helping to contribute um, to the preservation of the bee population. Um, Major corporate retailers like Home Depot and Lowe's have pledged to stop selling bee-killing pesticides, and the EU has enacted a moratorium, and governments in the Canada and the U.S. have been taking action against this. They've been trying to stop these bee-killing pesticides and stuff like that that have been used in agriculture and stuff like that, because bees pollinate, they help, they help things bloom, they help things bloom, they help in, well, they're essential part in helping in, well, the agriculture and in any plant life to, you know, bloom and give us the oxygen that we need to breathe, that give us the food we need to eat, everything else. But now a contractor for Bayer, one of the biggest producers of, uh, of bee-killing pesticides, has now been threatening to sue some of us if they don't basically, you know, shove it. And some of us has already stated that they are not going to be intimidated, um, um, and they've been basically threatening a lawsuit. And they're threatened, and just uh, you know, despite the request that they don't, you know, the, despite the request to call it off. So basically, some of us has been um, going after people asking for contributions. Uh, if you are, please donate to some of us. 
if you can, um, you know, anywhere from a dollar to whatever you can spare to help them fight against the Bayer Corporation. Now, Bayer, I believe, is the same, I think this is also the same Bayer, but I'm not entirely certain that I think also sells aspirin and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. But whatever you can do, help the Some of Us group and um, do what you can there. Because, again, this is another one of those cases of corporations trying, you know, big corporations trying to bully other people in, and basically trying to silence them through the sake of, you know, trying to make it financially impossible for them to exist. It's pretty much the same thing in any case with a corporation, whether it's Monsanto, whether it's Bayer, whether it's um, um, Pfizer, whatever the case is. The, the, the nature of a corporation is when they feel their, their profits being threatened, their first instinct is to, well, buy, first of all, try to buy their way out of a situation by spending more money on lawyers and legal fees and everything else than an initial lawsuit is worth. The other way around is to file a countersuit or to file an actual lawsuit in, any, in some way, shape, or form against an individual or group that is smaller than them, that obviously doesn't have as much money as them, and basically try to sh uh, fearmonger them into bankruptcy, essentially making the idea of of the the, the bring up the fear of the idea of basically going financially bankrupt or more, and you know, and the long drawn out legal bat battles and stuff like that. It's all in a case of trying to intimidate them into backing off and to, well essentially it's a form of censorship because you're trying to infringe upon their free speech to say what they want, to fight against a particular group and stuff like that. So it's really the use of big money t going towards censorship. And that's essentially what Monsanto has, is doing to, um, is trying to do to the city of Spokane. That's exactly what Bayer is trying to do to some of us. That is exactly what all these corporations do in general. That is the nature of capitalism. That is the nature of corporatism. And essentially, those are the those are the some of the building blocks of economic third positionists and fascism. And that is exactly what's going on here. Is Bayer is doing this to some of us to silence them and coerce them into backing down by burdening them with the fear and intimidation tactics of going bankrupt and basically having to cease their, cease their operations. It's all a fear-mongering tactic to try to shut them up. And that is a violation of free speech. That is just, it's also, and that too is also cowardly. It's absolutely, you know, it's childish. It really is. And again, do you, the people that are also suing them are so fucking cow so, so fucking cowardly that they won't even that they're going to also try to use their lawyers their big people to basically they're going to use their big money so that they that other people can do their shit for them do you think anybody who's a corporate ceo or anything like that will likely show their face anywhere near a courthouse no because they don't you know, because their biggest thing that they want to do is make more money. They don't, and they don't want to be drawn, they also don't want to have to face the music and stuff like that, or face responsibility for their own actions. They don't, you know, they, you know, they also fear their profit, mo you know, part of their profits being taken away because of, you know, be killing the particular pesticides that they, well, pretty much whore off to, to other third party groups and the whole fact is is that they are not going the, the CEOs are not going to the executives are not going to show their face in court they're not probably even going to even have to show up at a courthouse in fact if they the only way that, that I really see that going is if they're Worst came to worst is that if they really are having to be summoned and there's no way of getting out of it. But mostly, it's probably going to be a bunch of you know their 
financially backed whores that are going to be their, you know, again, their lawyers, their lobbyists, their assistants, anybody that will basically put in a good word for and anybody that will put in a good word for them. So, again, the executives won't even freaking, won't, won't even, most likely have to even face a court of law. And most of these settlements also are done outside of the courtroom. So, most likely, um, if at some point some of us in Bear might reach a settlement or something like that somewhere down the line. But, and, uh, that's also one of those things that typically happens too, because again, nobody wants the long, drawn out legal battle and stuff like that. Usually, and most lawsuits don't even hardly get to an actual courtroom. Most of them are settled outside of court. And, um, yeah. But again, it's just the whole fact that. CEOs, corporate executives like those at Monsanto, like those at um, at Bayer and everything else, they're fucking cowards who will not face the music. They are fucking children who don't want to accept their own actions. They basically try to because they're so fill you know because they're they have all the money in the world to pretty much do whatever they to th and think that they can do whatever they want they're going to try to use that to their advantage because, well, America is run by a bunch of money-loving whores. So, exactly my point. Um, but yeah, again, my hope is that for the city council of, um, the, that the city of Spokane is able to win their lawsuit or at least find some sort of uh, middle ground with Monsanto, and I hope that some of us ends up getting finding a way to uh, finding some victory out of this because these two groups are this the city both are you know both are basically people you know are basically a bureaucratic city government and one is a you know is basically a people's activist sort of organization. These are little people, folks. These are little people going after big corporations um, that are taking on big corporations and, are some, and in some of us' cases, those that are being directly attacked by big corporations and having to defend themselves. So, more power to them. Fuck Monsanto and fuck Bear. That's what I have to say on that issue. Lastly, let me bring up this one last topic real quick. Now, we all know how the UN and everything like the, or, uh, sorry, the UN, the US likes to make all these assumptions about North Korea and Iran and, you know, they used to make up claims about the Soviet Union and they typically, you know, still do that about a lot of other groups of countries in the world, particular third world countries, and especially um, Marxist countries, because they don't want to, uh, because number one, the they don't want to have foreign intervention into their, basically into their countries, particularly the International Monetary Fund, one of the biggest, you know, criminal you know, one of the most criminally capitalist institutions in the world, in my opinion. But they also, uh, it's also the fact that they, criti that they criticize them by making up these allegations that, um, you know, that they've got these labor, that they have uh, these forced labor camps and they've got all the, you know, concentration camps and all kinds of other bullshit and that they won't, oh, and one of their biggest criticisms is that they won't allow the UN into their country to investigate human rights abuses and everything else. But yet, the US has just recently denied the UN from entering the US prison system to investigate human rights abuses. So the great bastion of freedom and democracy that exists in the world that uh, you know it, it just is so just justly you know you know it's just so justly uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Um, personified isn't the issue, but we'll go with that one. Close enough. That, that they are that they basically go bullshit on their bullshit rants, saying that oh, North Korea is this evil totalitarian regime because they have the that they force their people into labor camps who challenge the authority of the supreme leader and everything like that that they commit human rights rights abuses that are almost tant that are just tantamount to the holocaust and it's just like they're committing ethnic genocide and everything like that if and so they criticize them and and talk about and make up all these baseless assertions without any actual credibility they don't ever really say who their sources are or anything else they just outright claim that it was some source which is typically always some biased South Korean source or some anti DPRK nonsense and they don't actually back up their claims with really anything these are people that go blatantly attacking the DPRK people like Joshua Stanton for instance who recently um, has you know gone after uh, Jason Unru and who was willing to actually discuss the whole issue over the DPRK in which Jason purely owned him and um, and before Jason could even have a chance, and Jason uh, Joshua Stanton basically stated that he would that he was willing to discuss the issue, but before uh, Jason could even go to post the, the could go to actually post the video, pretty much debunking all of Stanton's bullcrap, he blocked him. Not only did he block him, I had also shared a few of his of Jason's videos as well as my uh, my own viewpoints towards Joshua Stanton as well he also blocked me so it's not only the whole fact that they make up these baseless, baseless assertions and then they try to you know say that they are going to essentially sue somebody or try to bring up the whole issue by um, invoking Godwin's law, which by the way is not a law, it's an internet internet thing in which you invoke uh, in which the internet uh, the nature of the internet is that it eventually devolves into uh, people calling each other Nazis and fascists. Now I do that but at least I do that to the point where it actually makes sense I do that to it actually does make sense considering when I do a when I end up going into a Godwin's Law scenario, it's usually because it's justified in the sense, and but yeah, essentially he was going to uh, invoke Godwin's Law on Jason Unru, and it's not, without even realizing what Godwin's Law actually is, and he always purports this using of Godwin's Law you know, trying to uh, in his lawsuits, and it's like it's not even a law. It, and this guy claims to be a lawyer. He claims to. This is a guy who's written, freaking, uh, has f framed legal, um, has framed laws for the U.S. government. And this is someone that is basically allowed to run around and spout off baseless bullshit. Yet the very government that he supports and that he's and probably has helped invoke all these sanctions against North Korea and against Iran and against all these other groups that by and making these baseless assertions of uh, this detention and everything else is part of a government that, that you know is a lobbyist for a government and supports a government that has invoked indefinite has invoked laws of indefinite detention against American citizens which is challenged only by you know Alaska Virginia and um, gee there's also an, another um, state I can't really think of it uh, maybe if I kind of wave this or oh yeah my own state of California has actually even challenged indefinite detention and yet we are called states of insurrection
we're called we're considered rebellious states. Now, one of the laws that was passed was, I believe, AB three fifty one, in which California essentially states you can in you can invoke your federal laws. It's essentially like how the state legalized marijuana things issue um, work in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington and Alaska, in which the federal government still can invoke their laws on the people, but essentially the states say, we're not helping you. And that is essentially what AB 351 said, was that if you want to indefinitely detain Americans, if you want to indefinitely detain California citizens, go ahead, but you're not receiving our help. So it's, you know, it's not saying that indefinite detention can exist, but California makes it extremely hard for the federal government to do so. And essentially, it also helped to provide certain protections for state citizens. So, yeah, and in other words, you can do it, but you have to do it in the confines of state law. So, in other words, it was a big screw you to the U.S. government. thought that was funny. Anyway, yeah, this is the same government, though, that invokes indefinite detention, an unconstitutional act against American citizens in which they can bring you in without any probable cause, detain you for as long as they like, they can do whatever they want to you and and basically violate your constitutional rights. And, you know, it also invoked the Patriot Act, one of the, probably the out probably one of the most fascist legislations in the history of the United States. In fact, it is probably number one up there. And definite detention through the NDAA 2012 was probably a close second. And, you know, then there's also talks, you know, rumors and talks about FEMA camps and stuff like that. And whether you believe that or not is up to you. I, I don't really have a personal opinion about it. I used to believe in it. And now I'm kind of just, I don't really know whether I should or shouldn't or any of that, because, you know, there's not enough evidence to support it either, to support or deny that it exists. As well as the fact that there's not enough evidence to support or deny that the U.S. has also ordered 30,000 guillotines. But, whatever. Um, but this is, but... The reason why I bring up those conspiracy those conspiracy theorist ideas as well is because, you know, there's still rumors out there. I mean, this is a country that invokes indefinite detention, invokes the Patriot Act, may or may not invoke FEMA camps and, um, and, and, and guillotines for the use of killing Americans. Um, uh, this is the same government that also uh, brutalizes African Americans and other minorities and basically pretty much has forced people to have to learn their rights and how to avoid uh, and basically how to go about the legal way of confronting police because the police have gotten so blatantly you know so blatantly totalitarian and draconian that they don't know how to handle people I mean again Ferguson um, with Mike Brown uh, Sandra Bland recently all these different things that have come up Basically, the senseless killing and the senseless attacks on American citizens, the para, the, the militarizing of the police, uh, in in which they're you know basically getting armored vehicles and tanks and all kinds of other bullshit, and people that commit some of the biggest atrocities both on American citizens in prison, they commit acts of violence and xenophobia against people that are coming to this country. And peep, uh, you know, while also bitching and committing some of the worst genocides and war crimes against people in the third world, particularly in some of the countries that they have occupied. And yet, this is a country that criticizes, has, you know, has the balls to criticize the rest of the world, and yet they won't even allow the UN into their prison won't even allow the UN to investigate the whole the whole issue going on here so uh, hang now anyway it's one of those things where 
I think it's I think that the US government and frankly the US and its people need to shut the fuck up if they're going to start arguing that whole issue of uh, well, North Korea is a you know has you know has the prison camps. They won't allow the UN in. To, shut up right there. Once you start invoking the fact that they you know about their about someone else's human rights abuse before you even start criticizing another country for their human rights abuses and start criticizing the fact that they won't allow UN weapons inspectors or UN investigators into their country. Maybe you should, first of all, think about the fact that the U.S. does not allow, won't even allow the U.N. to come in and inspect our own prisons. If you can acknowledge the fact that there is a large hypocrisy with the United States government, then, then you have a say-so. But if you were going to try to justify and try to beat or you know beat around or completely avoid and ignore that particular instance then frankly I don't want to hear your arguments because your argument is invalid if you can come up with you know it's really there there's no justification for it so plain and simple it, it, it's just like check your privilege it's kind of one of those things when I say check your privilege it's one of those things that's like, well, before you start going on criticizing others, first of all, start by criticizing your own country. Because your country is also, is committing, may and may or may not be committing crimes against humanity. And if they, and I love how um, people also, people, whether normal American citizens or the U.S. government, have always stated, well, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. I think that should apply to the entire U.S. government and to the entire society of the, um, or to the entirety of, well, U.S., the, the U.S. entire, the whole entire U.S. It's like, if the government has nothing to hide, then why are they so fearful to let American citizens know what they're doing? Why are they trying to persecute people like Chelsea Manning, um, who they're trying to de who they're trying to always demonize and who are they're trying to actually bring up new charges against to put her into solitary confinement, possibly put her away for the rest of her life, and basically going on this witch hunt, which number one I think is partially because of transphobia. Two, because they um, are they've committed war crimes and don't like the idea that their war crimes have been exposed, and so yes, the essentially the U.S. government is is going at is going after an innocent, honorable, and heroic, courageous young young woman, and frankly, it's not right. They continuously, you know, they continuously persecute Chelsea Manning. They continuously persecute people like um, uh, Jeremy Hammond and um, uh, I think Brandon Brown was another one or something like that and um, Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. All these people they persecute simply because they have exposed and embarrassed the U.S. government and military because of the crimes that have been committed both at home and abroad. And yet they won't even allow the UN inspectors to come in and investigate investigate crimes. That, yeah, that, that really seems that, yeah that, that really seems honorable. That, that doesn't sound hypocritical at all. Um, but yeah, and essentially let me just go in to actually explain this for a second. The uh, uh, Obama, the first president to visit a federal penitentiary said in too many places black boys and black men and Latino boys and Latinos uh, and Latino men experience being treated differently under the law. The visit itself was described as unprecedented and historic, but the United Na the UN has been has not been as lucky as the U.S. president. Several UN officials uh, armed with mandates from the, from the Geneva-based Human Rights Council have been barred from the U.S. penitentiaries which are routinely accused of being steeped in a culture of violence. 
um, back in 1998, Radhika uh, Kumaswami, uh, um, or Kumaraswamy, I pro no, I probably butchered that name. The UN Special uh, Rapporteur on Violence Against Women was barred from visiting three Michigan prisons to probe sexual misconduct against women prisoners. Although she had made extensive preparations to inter interview inmates, Michigan Gov Governor John Engler barred uh, Kumar Sawami on the eve of her, vi of her proposed visit. The late Senator Jesse Helms, former chairman of the powerful Senate Foreign Relations Com Committee, blocked a proposal pr uh, proposed prison visit by Bakker uh, Whaley uh, Nadiani, again, probably barred, uh, butchered that name, head of the UN Human Rights Office in New York, and was, planned to, uh, and was planning to observe living conditions in some of the U.S. prisons. Obama's visit was prompted, has prompted the UN to give another shot at seeking permission to visit the U.S. prison system. Unfort un um, unfortunately, he, they are barred from it. And it's one of those things that's like, you go on talking, that, that's another hypocrisy right there, too. You go on talking about how there's, you know, a cultural, um, th this cultural misconduct, this cultural um, racism, uh, culture, cultural violence, and the way that people, that different people are being treated, uh, the, the way that different people are being treated in prisons, yet you won't even freaking let the UN to co come in and investigate it. You claim to be this great president that's going, that's trying to, uh, that's trying to ease and, and, uh, bring, and um, ease race relations and bring the races together and try to bring about some sort of social justice and equality, yet you free yet you don't even say you seem to even want to discuss the idea of bringing in the UN you're just going to automatically say no basically following in the footsteps of every other you know backwards american that does that does not want to you know basically that doesn't want to have their their human rights record come off as showing oh yeah we're probably just as bad as North Korea. You don't want, you know, because it would be embarrassing to the United States. And that is exactly what a lot of people before me on this issue have said. It would be embarrassing for the United States, and it would be, really not make them look good on the eyes of the world. And that's the one reason why they are not doing it, because if people, the rest of the world saw what America was like, not that it's any, would probably be any surprise, it, it, that sort of thing would just confirm everything. It would just make the U.S. look like a complete and total twatsicle. So, yeah, it, 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 it's very hypocritical. Only hilariously enhanced by the fact that shortly after this, the U.N. gave the U.S. a F in human rights. Absolutely hilarious. You should go read the article on that one, and I am actually going to, um, and I am actually probably going to. I will post that article on, uh, in the description box because it is absolutely hilarious. The fact that the U.S. was given a F in human rights, but the only reason that they're given an F is because I, the way I look at it is I equate it to kind of like going in for a, a piss test for, for uh, drugs and stuff like that. Essentially, you have refused to let the UN come in there and inspect what, you know, and investigate human rights abuses. So think of it like a drug test. They basically have asked for, have asked you to pee in the cup by not allowing them to do so you basically are pretty much resisting and thus it's one of those uh, you are pretty much resisting or you could even consider it kind of like a no-show which is basically the same as a as a, a positive test so essentially by refusing to do to allow the UN into your, you know, into the prisons to allow the UN to investigate the U.S. for its crimes against humanity. They basically have come up, have had an automatic positive because they they were not in compliance. 
So I think that's absolutely fair. I think that's absolutely justified. I think that's absolutely hilarious. And so as a result, the U.S. gets the report that they deserve. Now, I know that there's a lot of people pissed off and angry by now watching this video saying, well, why do we need to have these people come in? Because it basically makes us look better in the eyes of the world and say that we're willing to commit and face responsibility like the rest of the world. While we are, we're, we're America, we don't need to... Yes, we do. We need to be held accountable for the same actions and the same responsibilities and the same standards that the rest that the rest of the that we hold the rest of the world to we don't get to dictate you know what the rest of the world gets to do the UN does and we should not be the we should not be the exempt or the guiding governing force of the UN just because we happen to be the home of where the UN is which is in New York we shouldn't be we shouldn't be allowed to just get away with shit we shouldn't be. We have committed probably more war crimes, more, uh, more violations against international law than probably any other country. Probably just as much as some countries. Yet we don't face any sanctions for it. Fuck that. If we commit w war crimes, if we commit crimes against other countries or our own people or whatever the case may be, it doesn't really matter. If we commit crimes that are against international law, that are against any UN resolution, we should face sanctions. We should face the punt. We should face the music and own up to our responsibilities. Because that is what makes us the same as everybody else. Just because we, are, we claim to be a superpower, just because we think that we're high and mighty, does not mean a damn thing. We need to get off our high horse about that, and we need to learn to accept responsibility. Or at least our government should accept responsibility. Now, yes, would certain sanctions, would certain punishments hurt the U.S., hurt its people? Yes, it would. But it would also give the, it would also, I think, be really good for the people to help uh, hold their politicians, to help uh, uh, hold their representatives and to help hold their government responsible for their actions because if the government commits you know crimes against its commits crimes against its own people or commits crimes against other people it's going to face some problems that are going to make life more difficult so yeah it really is a it, it, it and i mean hell we it, if Iran and North Korea somehow commit crimes against their own people, which I'm sure in some cases they do. I mean, I'm not going to be so bold and egotistical of a Marxist to say that they probably, that they don't. We don't have sufficient evidence to prove or disprove certain things. But let's just say for the sake of things that North Korea commits a human rights abuse then the first thing that people do is to put sanctions on that government. And essentially that's going to hurt, the, if it commits human rights abuses, like say against their own people, then their thing is to, is to put sanctions forward that's going to make things difficult for the government, thus make things difficult to provide for their, for their people, which thus makes it harder for their government, for the people to get by and then more sanctions come along anyway it's a downward spiral what needs to happen is also some reform within the UN that some sort of action to happen within the the UN to make it more keen on how they handle uh, issues with a country that commits violations against its own people violations against international law with you know domestically as opposed to what they do as what you know something that they might do internationally so that needs to happen as well but the main key point that I make here is that the the US needs to be held accountable for its own actions and you know ha needs to learn to play along to this to the same beat of the drum that's all I'm saying so yeah that'll probably piss off a lot of, of nationalistic patriotic Americans you know who don't think who basically don't think that we should be held to those same standards but we really do it's it 
makes us it would make us definitely look better and it would hold us accountable hold us as the people too accountable for the people that we you know put you know put into those positions so all i'm saying is let's learn it, it's it, it's kind of like if we're going to learn if we're going to bitch let us bitch for a purpose let us actually you know if we're going to bitch about other people let us not be hypocrisy let us not commit hypocrisy while we're doing it you know the way i look at it it's we don't get to bitch about other countries when we're doing the same damn thing so case in point don't be a hypocrite and let, again let us actually move forward and a lot and and yeah learn, learn to be to march to the beat of the same drum as everybody else don't know how i can put that any more clear really so i'm norcal nick leader of the revolutionist movement and this has been norcal corner peace